So I was lucky in a purchase I made with getting two complete kits for two identical survey meters. And uh, these often are hard units for amateurs to use based on a few technical specs that uh, the company who made them put in it. Now, right off the bat, these both came in a Pelican 1550, which is nice. Uh, I don't really know what the difference between a 1550 and a 1500 is, but they look identical to the 1500s, so uh, maybe somebody can tell me. But both of the kits are exact same, so I'm just going to be covering and showing off one. Uh, they both came from the Department of Human Health and Services. So, uh, I don't really know exactly what the Department of Human Health and Services conducts, but the survey meters were one of some of them. In this case, this one's marked case three. And the other one I have is case four. So they have at least four of them. Uh, we open it up and take a look. They're complete kits. Uh, we have, I'm just gracious in getting documentation for both of them. And also, unlucky in getting a floppy disk for the software. Some software is better than no software. Both of these kits are identical in layout and instrument-wise, instrumentation. They both have a Eberline ESP, I mean not ESP, an Eberline E600 survey meter. It is a, well, some people hate them, some people like them. I, I quite like them. Uh, but there's reasons people hate them. It's fully digital. Uh, with that, we have a standard pickle probe with a gamma shield for dosimetry purposes. One thing people hate about these is they have these fancy multi-pins. And that is because the instrument is smart. The probe is smart. The probe tells the instrument what kind of probe it is and also the parameters that this probe needs. The instrument also knows what kind of probe it is and also carries some of the parameters. So in this case, the probe would tell, tell voltage, count constant, stuff like that. Well, the meter knows what it is and knows what uh, dead time and what, uh, uh, what is it? How big of a window it wants, how much, uh, how to set the amplifier in the detector. We also, each one got a pancake probe for alpha, beta, gamma contamination survey. In this case, the meter sees it as beta, since these are most efficient at beta detection. They do work for x-ray, gamma, and alpha, but beta is what it's really good at. Alpha is just a thing that it also can detect because of the micro window. And then we also, each one also has a gamma scintillator. In this case, it's a SSPA-9, which is a low-energy scintillator, but it's in a lead shroud. I assume it's because this is too sensitive by itself. It is a low-energy scintillator with about a half-inch by two-inch sodium iodide crystal in it fits perfectly in its own shroud. The shroud is about a quarter inch of lead with an additional eighth inch of steel in all directions minus the hookup side. To pair with this, there is a dummy dongle. Uh, this is the memory pack and it allows you to go from, uh, I can't remember what connector the multi pins are, to, in this case, an MHV. Uh, essentially, it just fills in the role that these have, have 
uh, non-volatile memory in them. This is your non-volatile memory telling the instrument what it wants. Um, they do this in part because the survey meter has three probe presets, two of which can be designated to smart probes, and then one can be designated to a dummy probe. You can have all three smart probes, but you always guaranteed two smart probes and a dummy probe channel in the meter. And you don't have to swap these channels, they will automatically switch when you connect your uh, probes to them. We also have cables. In this case, this one is to go between the probes and the meter. And also a uh, data link to go between your computer and your meter. I'm going to put back in this heavy fuck back in there. The case has slots for, well, three individual units. I believe that these were for source sources indicated between each probe. Uh, if they And I assume they were sources because they're no longer in here. Anything that comes from the government, they like to take the sources out. It's irritating. I know why they do it. It's not illegal for me to have the sources. I would love to have the sources, but they buy hundreds of them at a time and they have to account for them when they start decommissioning stuff. A close, on closer inspection of the meter, it is just a standard meter. This takes three C cells. Some of them take three nine volts, which is ridiculous. But, well, you get what you get when you buy them. Uh, and this meter is designed for user, user efficiency. It do both rate meter, integration, and scale, scalar, along with a peak hold and a background count. Background is for background sub, uh, uh, background minusing, so you can do a count and then minus out your background automatically. So whatever your count is, is essentially the total without background already. So you don't have to worry about subtracting background in your calculations. There's a range selector, which really doesn't do much for you since this auto ranges. I assume they have it in here because occasionally it'll be stuck on a high range and you need your down range it to get off of a decimal point. You have fast and slow down here. Medium is its safe spot. Slow is off to your left. Fast is off to your right. Fast is jittery as all hell. Slow is all right. Medium is pretty fine just where it's at. You also have a gross net, which I haven't figured out 100%, and a speaker function. On your handle, you have star, which is essentially your... Uh, Think of a shift key on a keyboard. It allows you to open up more stuff along with a light function, a channel, and a log. This will save uh, memory. So if you want to log a survey, you can. And then in later date, you can pull it out via the computer. The things that make these hard to use is it has a check function. And this is a safety function, so the meter, if it has something wrong, it will show up right here. But in this case, they like to go into failsafe without a cal. If your probe or your survey meter is not within calibration, they will lock up. Now these have a special feature, which most don't. Press that star, and it'll cut out a lock. And that's because the Department of Health doesn't want to be left with however many meters that they can't use when shit hits the fan. Most universities and institu institutions will leave them without that fail-safe unlock because they do not want somebody picking up a meter and using it in a laboratory and getting a false, false reading. It's not hard for them to delay an activity <clears throat> when they need to get something calibrated. But in the case of 
the U.S. government buying these. They don't want to be without a meter when I, my nuclear power plant just blew up. Let's grab a meter. Oh, it's out of calibration. I can't use it. Now what do we use? So we'll hook a simple probe up. In this case, we'll just grab the pickle since it's right here and easy to grab. I gotta line it up. These cables being pinned so much has a certain lineup. So when we go in to check, because this has to fail safe, we can out of check, out of cal, then out of cal on the probe. You know, tell me what it is. In this case, it's gamma and the detector name. And it will do a check. And now we're ready to switch to rate meter. Now, in this case, on this probe with rate meter, it does essentially the same thing as integrate. On this probe, integrate and rate meter will do the exact same thing. But say you want on a pancake probe to have rate meter do counts per minute, but integrate, you can do your dose rates, in this case, nano R an hour, or you are. Well, it's going to change automatically. These have a nice light function. The light is red. They look cool at night. Also, sound. Sound isn't bad. It's, of course, the electric tone. There ain't much else, too. It's scalar does exact... Well, integrate does the same, but scalar does exactly the same thing as any scalar would. And as soon as you enter scale, it will immediately start counting. It will give you a count down. In this case, these are set up for one minute times. And then you're approximate after one minute. And peak hold will do the thing of no matter uh, what leading you're getting off the probe, it'll hold at the maximum reading you got. Then background's just, we're going to see what the background is. And it does a ridiculously long time usually when you start it via star. So in this case, it says percent. Until completion, I don't really know. I haven't given one of these long enough to complete a background scan. Because I want to try to see if on scalar, start, yep, start will restart the scale. I haven't messed with channel. Channel is so, so if you're using a, say, a alpha beta probe, you can switch between alpha channel and beta channel. And I haven't messed with log at all because I don't have a computer set up for it yet. This one's Windows XP. So I need to find something that would take a floppy disk and has Windows XP. There's not much else to say about these. When they work, they're nice meters. They're nice, simple. They feel like it. They're three pounds by themselves without batteries. All die cast aluminum. But they can be uh, tricky to use, tricky to maintain, and um, they don't always last the longest because without the calibration data, you can't really do anything with them. Especially considering anybody who buys one of these without a probe will probably come up with <laughs> out the ability to use it because they don't know what probe it wants. It could want a pancake, it could want a scintillator. There's three chances, and all three of those could be something different. But they're nice kits. I like them. They work. They sound nice. Not much else to say about it. I'm going to do some more filming of these, especially during detection. 